Ceramic arrives in Wellington, bringing to New Zealand the first British rugby team to tour this country since 1930. During its three-month stay, the team will play 23 matches, including four tests, one in each of the main centres, and will later tour Australia. This, the fifth British team to tour New Zealand, is composed entirely of players of international experience. Of its 30 members, three come from England, five from Scotland, nine from Ireland, and 13 from Wales. In an informal welcome to the team, Mr. Belcher, chairman of the New Zealand Rugby Union, says... And I hope that when the time comes to say goodbye in three months' time, that you will be able to look back on this tour of New Zealand with the most pleasant and happy memories. I wish you all the best of luck on your tour, and I hope that it will prove most enjoyable. The team manager, Surgeon Captain Osborne, replies... Um, all the boys are well and uh, in good heart, and we've come here uh, to play good open football, uh, as you do, and we remember that it was in this tradition that uh, that great team of Dave Gallagher's uh, uh, started this uh, play. And so uh, I'm uh, going to ask Captain Mullen, uh, ask Carl Dr. Carl Mullen, our captain, uh, to continue with a few remarks now. But we're all jolly glad to be here. Well, uh, on behalf of the team, I would just like to say we've had a very, very pleasant crossing. We're all feeling very well, and we're looking forward very much to our games. I was one of the lucky ones who played against the Kiwis when they were over in the British Isles on their last occasion. And I do hope that we go down as well here in New Zealand. That grand team went down in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Athletic Park, Wellington and the British Isles and the New Zealand Rugby Union teams take the field for the third of four tests. With the first game drawn and the second won by New Zealand, this may be the vital match of the rubber. British Isles win the toss, Scott kicks off for New Zealand and the referee orders a scrum at the halfway. There are 42,000 people, an overcast sky, a few showers, not much wind and the ground is soft after a week's rain. British Isles hook the ball from the first scrum of the match and Kyle sends it to touch just past the 10-yard mark. The British Isles backs have it again, but Matthews is brought down. From a ruck, it goes to Bledon Williams, their captain for today, who left foots it for touch with a beautiful kick just short of the corner. The game has started well and the grandstand critics are happy. From the ruck, it goes over the New Zealand goal line. Scott gathers it in, dodges one man, kicks for touch from in goal, finding it about 10 yards out. The kind of play that makes strangers in the crowd old friends. From a scrum, Bevan gets it for New Zealand, passes to Scott, who's come into the back line as an extra man, but the referee penalises New Zealand for a scrum infringement, and Robbins takes the kick for British Isles. It's over, and British Isles lead 3-0. From the line out, the forwards pack round, and the New Zealanders hook it back to Bevan, who gives it to Haig. Haig tries to go through on his own, but is well tackled by Kyle and Mackay. Rimmer kicks ahead, it's picked up by Roper and thrown back to Scott. Scott passes infield at the halfway mark to Roper. He's stopped, and the New Zealand forwards overrun the ball. Now Bevan has it. Ian passes to Simpson, who takes it down to the British Isles, 25. The ball rolls loose and Kyle kicks it into touch. Cleaver puts the ball into the scrum for the British Isles. He dodges Crowley, runs round the scrum, cuts out two men and hands it to Bledon William, who races down the field on his own. Mate stops Williams and his pass to Nelson goes astray. Clifford picks it up and his pass is intercepted by Haig, who runs across and kicks for touch. New Zealand hooked the ball and Bevan gives it to Haig. Haig throws out a high one. It's intercepted by Bledon Williams and he kicks just as he's tackled. 
Strutt gathers it in, dodges two men and kicks upfield. The British R's backs attack again. Roper downs Williams and this pass is intercepted by Elbridge, the New Zealand captain who passes it out to Mates on the wing and Matthews just misses him. Cleaver gets Mates and his pass to Roper is forward. Bevan puts the ball into a scrum inside the British Isles 25. New Zealand are now playing one man short, but Elbridge makes a determined bid for the line. He's stopped, the ball goes loose, and Skinner dives across but overruns the ball. A narrow escape for the visitors and a disappointment for the New Zealand supporters. Next, Crowley dives for it, but Cleaver dives too, and just stops the ball crossing the line and it's kicked back into the forwards. It comes out to Hague who goes for the corner with Mates outside him. He passes out but Mates finds Thomas in the way. The referee awards New Zealand a penalty for obstruction and Scott takes the kick. It drops beside the post and Clifford takes it and runs across the goal line. He's tackled and the ball rolls loose. Bevan gets it, sends it along the New Zealand back line. It gets as far as Elvidge, he loses it and now the British Isles backs are taking play right down the field. Rimmer puts the ball into the scrum for the visitors. Crowley breaks away with it, but Rimmer takes it from him and dive passes to William who kicks the touch. Half time and time for a stretch. The score, British Isle three points, a penalty goal, and New Zealand nil. After half time, New Zealand are playing too short in the forwards with Elvidge playing his extra back. The ball comes along the New Zealand line to Johnson. He passes to Elvidge, and Elvidge races for the line and crashes over in a tackle. A gallant effort by New Zealand's captain, who just returned to the field after having four stitches put in his fodder. Haig takes the kick. It's outside the post, and the score is now 3 all. From a line-off, the ball goes to Rimmer and on to Kyle, who cuts between Haig and Roper, but his pass to Williams is forward. From a scrum, Bevan gets the ball out to Haig, and Haig out to Roper. The ball goes loose, Matthews picks it up, bends off Mates and kicks for touch. A few minutes later, New Zealand are awarded a penalty, and Scott has a shot. It's over. New Zealand now leads 6-3, to three, but a penalty to British Isles gives Robbins a chance to equalise. A good kick, but just outside the post. With only a few minutes left and New Zealand leading by the slender margin of three points, both sides are playing all out. British Isles needs at least a draw to save the rubber, and New Zealand have won it if they can hang on to their lead and take this game. The defence holds on both sides and full time comes with the final score, 6-3 to New Zealand, who won the test rubber with two wins and a draw. At Wellington's Athletic Park, the Governor-General, Sir Bernard Freiburg, BC, meets members of the New Zealand Maori team, which is playing the visiting British Isles Rugby Union team in the final match of their tour. Captain of the Maoris is Blake of Wairarapa, and leading the British Isles team today is their captain, Carl Mullen of Ireland, who introduces his men to His Excellency. To date, the visitors have played 22 games, won 16, lost 5, and had one draw. Throughout their tour, the British Isles team has played fast open football that has drawn record crowds all over New Zealand. Maoris kick off into the light and a strong Norwest wind and Mullen takes the ball on the full and claims a fair catch just before his tackle. Mullen kicks high from the mark and the ball goes into touch. Ken Jones throws in for British Isles. John gets the ball and it goes out to the British Isles backs. The ball goes along the line to Williams who kicks for touch and finds it with a good one near the corner. For a weekday match, the crowd of 40,000 is a record. 
There'll be no business done in Wellington City today. From a scrum near the centre of the field, Carl gets the ball out to Henderson, who kicks ahead and follows up fast. Taylor, the Maori's fullback, stops the rush, but the ball comes the other way. Henderson has it again, breaks away upfield with Tim Jones outside him. He passes to Jones, who races round to score comfortably behind the posts. Lewis Jones, British Isles fullback, has no trouble with the kick from right in front. From a dropout by Taylor, the Maoris follow up fast and take the play into the British Isles half. From fast, loose play, typical of the whole game, Mariner picks the ball up and when tackled, passes out on his left. Ohio gathers it in, passes out to Ursig, the winger, who goes for the corner but is pushed into touch by Ken Jones. From the line out, Pai Wai, the Maori's halfback, throws out a long pass to his backs. Peter Smith picks it up and drop kicks for go. It's over to make the score British Isles 5, Maori's 3. A difficult crosswind 40 yard penalty by Lewis Jones is a perfect kick, and now British Isles lead 8 3. There's excitement in the crowd as the Maori's take play into the British half again, with Urseg racing down the wing. As Carl gets to him, he kicks ahead. Lewis Jones fails to force, and Ursek dives on it for a try. <laughs> Taylor's kick misses, and the score is now British Isles 8, New Zealand Maori 6, still anybody's game. British Isles attack again and Henderson passes out to fullback Lewis Jones who has Ken Jones outside him. Jones passes to Jones and goes for the line but is forced out in the corner by Cheddington. From the line out the forwards get the ball back to Black who reverse passes to Kyle. Again Lewis Jones comes into the line to make extra man but the Maori's defence holds and when Williams is tackled the ball is kicked into touch. Another penalty to British Isles on the 25, and Lewis Jones kicks another three points. The score now, British Isles 11, Maori 6, and only a few minutes to half time when Peter Smith, who'd been playing well at second 5 eighths for the Maoris, goes off with a dislocated shoulder to leave them one man short for the rest of the game. Once again, Lewis Jones comes into the back line. This time he cuts right through the Maori defence, draws the full back and passes to Henderson who scores near the corner. Lewis Jones, who engineered the try, takes the kick. It's wide of the mark, Jones registers disgust and the half-time score is British Isles 14, Maori 6. After half-time, the Maoris with a strong wind behind them are all out to make up that eight-point leeway and are almost across the British line. Williams picks the ball up behind his own goal line and boldly runs up field. He kicks for touch, but it bounces off McLaughlin, who kicks ahead and makes for the line, but Lewis Jones gets there first and forces. From a line out, the Maori forwards break through and dribble the ball down towards the British line again. over the line and Hefferty dives on it for a well-earned try. Taylor's kick is outside the posts and the score 14-9. The Maoris playing one short have been attacking most of the second spell. Goldsmith takes the ball towards the British Isles 25. His pass infield is intercepted by Stevens, but Stevens is well swamped by Goldsmith, Blake and Rattamont. Time is growing short, and the fight for possession of the ball is fierce. From the ruck, Highway sends the backs away again and another bit for the line. Chellington's pass to Ersig is snapped up by Ken Jones, and the Olympic sprinter flies up the touchline. Jones swerves infield looking for a gap, but it's closed, and he's brought down after a 50-yard run. a scrum in the Maori's half, Black gets the ball, dummies and then goes round the blind side on his own. He's 
forced into touch on the 25 and the referee signals full time. The final score is British Isles 14, New Zealand Maoris 9 after a fast and entertaining game. Thousands of spectators swarm on the field to pay tribute to the British Isles team at the end of their highly successful and popular tour of New Zealand. Yeah.